Hello there and welcome outdoors to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash, the curator of this channel, which aims to provide you with life skills, knowledge and advice that will help you on your journey to being the best chap that you can be. Now today is episode four in my short series of public speaking and communication skills. In the first three episodes, we covered being prepared for the fear that is associated with public speaking. On the second episode, we talked about the logistics around being as prepared as we possibly can around giving our talk. And in the last episode, we talked about stagecraft, the way that we conduct ourselves, we hold ourselves, and the way that we perform in front of an audience. Now, in this episode, I'm going to talk about content, the all important element of your presentation. In fact, the most important element because the content is what we're there for. We are there to make sure the information that is in our minds transmits to the minds of the audience in as slick and efficient a way as possible. So delivering that content is what we're here today to talk about. Now, if you haven't seen the three previous episodes, you will find the links in the description box below. Go and have a look at those. They don't have to be seen in order, but if you watch the four parts of this series, you will be ultimately better prepared as a public speaker, and you'll be able to communicate even more effectively with audiences or individuals. That's the key to this style of presentation style that I talk about. So today, let's talk about that content. The first thing that I want to get across to inexperienced speakers is never apologize for your presentation at the beginning of your talk. I think so many inexperienced speakers feel very nervous and when they start their presentation just before they launch into their performance, they get terribly befuddled by the whole situation and end up apologizing in advance for their presentation to the audience. You know, something along the lines of, Ooh, please bear with me, I'm an inexperienced public speaker, I'm new to all this, I'm very sorry about the presentation. And even before you start, you have placed the seed in the mind of your audience that you're not going to perform very well. And this also plants the seed in your mind that you're not going to perform very well. So do not begin your presentation with an apology. By all means, apologize at the end if it hasn't gone the way you'd hoped or if something went wrong. But wait until the end. Because even though you're terribly nervous, you might knock this one out of the park, give a blinding performance, no need to apologize, right? So don't start with an apology. Apology. Tip number two is grab attention at the beginning of your presentation. And I don't mean jump up and down or start shouting or tell a funny joke or anything like that. Grab, a, grab attention means don't launch into the tried and tested PowerPoint style of throwing up, these are the objectives for the presentation today, blah, blah, blah. Because even before your audience begins to listen, they've already started to turn off. The best way to start your presentation is to say something interesting. So I often use an interesting statistic or a fact relating to the topic that I'm going to present about. Something which will grab people's attention, get them thinking, get them excited about the information that's about to unfold from you, the speaker. So don't start with boring bullet points saying this, this, this. Give them an interesting statistic to get them going. Now, tip number three is to use the tried and tested teacher's methodology. And that is quite simple, the tell them's. Tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, then tell them what you've just told them. The holy grail of presenting information to people. I'll break that down. Tell them what you're going to tell them. What that means is, at the beginning, we tell them what lies in store for them in the presentation we're about to deliver. That way, they know they're in the right room, they're ready to listen to what you've got to say, they're excited, they want to hear it. So it's a little sneak peek of what's coming, keeps them interesting. Then, tell them. You t this is the meat in the sandwich, the important bit, the main body of your presentation. We deliver it to them in a knockout performance as the main part of our talk. And then finally, tell them what you've just told them. 
What that means is, well, it's a little executive summary of what we have just said in the previous tell them stage. Because don't forget, if you're giving an hour long presentation, it could be quite a long time between the end and the beginning. And they may have forgotten some of those salient facts which you wanted to embed in their minds. So just tell them what you've just told them is giving them a little summary of the important parts of what you've just said. So it's fresh in their mind when they leave the room and they're more likely to remember it. Now another tip is don't be afraid to use humour in your presentation style. Just be careful with it. Because as I've said in some of the previous episodes, what we seek to achieve in public speaking is to adopt a conversational style with the people that we're engaging with. Be it one person in the room or a hundred people in the audience. We're just trying to capture their imagination and speak to them as if we're speaking to them individually. So, if we use a bit of humour in our normal speaking style, we should use it when we're public speaking. But as I say, be careful what you say. Don't use flippant jokes which may be interpreted in the wrong way by the wrong people. Stay away from religion, politics, matters of a sexual nature, things which could alienate or embarrass people in the room. But do use humour because it's a great way of connecting with human beings. Now sometimes when you're stood in front of the audience, if you're there for quite some time, as often you know, professional presentations can be anything up to 45, an hour, uh, 45 minutes, an hour in length, it's a long time for people to stay engaged. And I often see it when I give presentations, people get this zombie stare. They are staring directly at the screen, particularly if you're, you know, I'm obviously talking about using PowerPoint or Keynote or one of the other slide delivery platforms in which we use illustrated slides to engage with people and they will just stare at that slide and it's almost like you're superfluous to the proceedings because they're looking at the slide zombie stare the way to overcome that i the way i do it most often is to push the b key on your keyboard or if you have a clicker many of them now have a, a button which does this it blanks out the screen in fact, if you press the double key on your keyboard when you're in slide mode, it normally whites out the screen. Depends on what you'd prefer, black or white. But either way, they do exactly the same thing. It takes the attention away from the screen and returns it to you. This can be very useful if you're about to reach a very important part of your presentation and you want the audience to focus back on you. Blank out the screen, they'll turn to look at you instead of staring at the screen and you've got their attention. They're back in the room with you and that's your moment to land your killer blow. Good way of doing it, the B or the W button. Now when it comes down to your content, this is where you can make some great gains in retaining the attention of your audience. And my tip for this part, don't use too much text on those slides. Now, I understand why people do it. PowerPoint has this terrible, incitement for you to write lots of things on it or cut and paste material from another document and plonk it onto uh, that PowerPoint slide and you think that you're giving a useful and worthwhile uh, presentation to the people in the room. Absolutely nothing could be further from the truth. How many of us have heard of the expression death by PowerPoint? And that is exactly the case when I think of terrible PowerPoint, I think of PowerPoint with loads of texts, loads of words, which encourages the audience to sit there and read it quite often at the same time as the presenter is doing the same thing. So it's not a good way of communicating information. So use as little text as you possibly can. Now, a good word of, uh, you know, rule of thumb, no more than nine to 12 words on one slide. That's all. There's none of this cutting and pasting paragraphs out of another document, putting it on your PowerPoint and delivering it to an audience. That is not presenting, right? That is a public reading exercise and it's something to be avoided. So don't do it. But when you do use text, I recommend using the same font throughout the entirety of your presentation so that there is continuity. There's nothing worse than looking at different styles of font and you know you feel disconnected to the presentation when that happens. I would also recommend my personal preference, particularly if you're presenting in well-lit environments, which is often the case when you're presenting professionally. You know, you, you're in a room 
presenting to your team or a group of other people or managers or bosses or whatever. So there's normally lighting in the room. A good way of capturing people's eyesight is to have white text on a black background, opposed to the standard sort of black on a white background. Works really effectively. I always do it. I think it connects well with the audience and it's easier to read. So another tip, when we're talking about using text, think about your slides as the billboard to your presentation, right? The slides are not the star of the show. That's you. The slides know nothing. They are merely your glamorous assistant and they are there to help your audience connect and remember what you are saying to them. You know, all of that information, it's in you, not the slides. So you wanna make sure that those slides complement what you're saying. And what I tend to do, use large, colorful images that bear a relation to what you're talking about, right? If you can't find any, go out and take some. Right? Everybody's got a camera in their pocket these days on their phone. Go out, snap a few shots of something which is relevant to what you want to talk about and then deliver that in your presentation. It will be so much better at connecting with your audience rather than putting droning words on there which they'll have read at the same time as you're reading it out to them. It's not fun at all. So go for those images and think of them as a billboard to your presentation. And on that subject of reading out your slides, never do it. I have seen so many times presenters or people who call themselves professional public speakers turning, turning their back on the audience and reading their slides out to the people who were sat in the room, who to be frank, have already read that slide because whilst he was still talking about it, they've read it over the shoulder. You're wasting your time it's a public reading exercise. You're no longer a presenter. You're just giving them information. You could have sent it to them in an email. The whole point of public speaking and presenting in person is to bring that dynamic energy into the room. So never turn your back on the audience and read your slides. If you've, let, if you've followed my previous advice, you won't have slides that you can read to them anyway. It should be large images. Think of your slides as a handrail to your presentation, something that helps you along. Imagine climbing the stairs, you've got the handrail there just to help you, steady you, give you confidence. That's all that your slides are meant to be. They are not meant to be the script for your talk. They are not there for you to read or know your way along. Because if something went terribly wrong and the screen, the projector went down and you were stood there on your own, you should be able to give that presentation without the support of those slides. Remember, they're only your glamorous assistant. They are not the main body of that presentation. Now, talking about your content, try and limit the animation or transitions that you use in your slides, okay? I understand why people have this terrible temptation to want to use the fancy animations of, you know, uh, origami, the screen folding down into various bits and scooching off to the right and the left and garish colors wibbling and wobbling around the screen. Quite frankly, when I see presentations like that, it actually makes me feel a little bit nauseous, a little bit sick, and I certainly don't feel connected or engaged with the speaker. I think, well, you know, it's a little bit childish, that they felt the need to do that rather than just sticking to a quality presentation. So keep the animations to a limit, to a limit, a very small number, just again, to add relevance to your presentation. That's all you need to do. And a simple transition between slides. I personally, I use the cube transition all the time. It's nice and professional. It looks good. It looks stylish. And that's all you need, really. It's something as simple as that. On that content, bullet points. All right, when you open a PowerPoint presentation, one of the templates that it's got there ready for you to use is one with bullet points all ready for you to fill in. And there is a temptation to use these bullet points. My recommendation, bullet points kill people, yeah? It is absolutely no good for retaining your interest if you're using these bullet points and you have three or four different pieces of information on that slide. Let's remember one thing. These slides are free of charge, all right? You're not charged per slide in the presentation. So instead of having one slide with three bullet points, have three slides. And then you've got three 
interesting, relevant images behind the information, which will help people remember and connect with your message. So if you can remember that, you'll be doing well. Bullet points kill interest, right? Bullets kill people. Remember it that way, no bullet points. Now, when it comes to delivering information to people, one of the most tricky areas to get your message across is when you have to talk about statistics, right? It can be crushingly boring in the audience to sit there and have somebody showing you graph after graph. To be frank, most of the time you can't understand it, you can't read the values, you're too far away. It's absolutely pointless and it makes people switch off. What I recommend as a top tip, go and make those statistics an enjoyable and livable experience yeah so instead of using a pie chart and call, believe me nobody has ever run after me in the street and said hey ash i was at a presentation you gave last week god those pie charts you showed us you know i've been up at night thinking about them they were fantastic no that doesn't happen it actually puts people to sleep at night doesn't keep them up so what i recommend as i say go out and find some way of delivering that information in a unique and original fashion and that will help people remember it and connect with it even if it's something as simple as using sweets you know on a sheet of paper take a photograph of it instead of a graph or lego blocks you know here's an image that i uh, raided my son's lego box the other day to just show an example of how you can make statistics come alive by using a very recognizable object which will stick in people's minds now again, little word of caution, I wouldn't recommend using Lego to compare something as desperately serious as, you know, crime figures or something of that nature, or performance, if your performance of that particular team or your business is bad. You know, you don't want to add insult to injury by trivialising a bad situation by using kids' toys to use, you know, to, to pass that information over. But if you are in a safe environment where you are trying to get information across to fellow professionals, uh, this is a great way of doing it. Believe me, people remember about it, remember that information, they've connected with the message and they'll talk about it for a long time after. So that's a good way of getting it across. Now, just a few little housekeeping tips when you're giving a presentation, right? Keep it as simple as possible. If, you, if you're stuck at any point of your presentation and you're tempted to put loads of text on or anything like that, or a, or a graph or a pie chart or a hierarchical chart or something of that nature, just remember these words. Keep it simple, right? Or the old adage, keep it simple, stupid, the kiss. But keep it simple because that's what people want when they're sat there some distance back watching the screen listening to you they want simple information they can connect with and they can easily remember the more complex your message the more simple you need to distill it down so that your audience can understand it and take away the information in their minds and finally last housekeeping rule keep to time if you are given a 15 20 30 minute slot in a conference a meeting or whatever it may be somebody says you've got 20 minutes keep to 20 minutes there is nothing more discourteous or disrespectful to either the organizer or the other speakers in that environment because if you take 40 minutes instead of 30 the person coming after you may have to lose 10 minutes off their 30 minute slot they will not welcome you for that and it's not fair so stick to your time if necessary practice in advance and you know listen to it back record it on your phone see how long it takes get your stopwatch out you know time yourself get your phone out when you're giving a presentation keep an eye on the clock don't go over time you will not win any friends in the audience with the organizer or with your fellow cohort of speakers if you start doing things like that so there we are some simple tips to round off my public speaking and communications skills series of videos for you. I hope you can take something away from these four different videos, each 
in each we've explored a different aspect of public speaking and if you put them all together or even take one video at a time and take some of that information away you will be doing very well. Now just to round off I've got a little video here that I've found off YouTube which I'm going to stick on this video which I think you will find useful. It never ceases to make me laugh. It is a genuine video of a person showing how not to approach public speaking and uh, just remember this is a real video so please like the video if you've enjoyed it subscribe to the chaps guide channel and by all means tell your friends get them to watch it as well click the little bell notification icon that means you will get all our future videos and you won't miss anything thanks for listening and I will see you again very soon ladies and gentlemen in terms of education I have a bachelor's degree in sociology, a bachelor's degree in history, a master's degree in public administration. In the history of the spoken word, and it is as follows. In the middle of opportunity, excuse me, in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. I'm going to repeat that so I have clarity tonight. In the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. This is the opportunity we've been waiting for. The Star County Treasurer's Office is a mess. It is in dire need of structure and guidance. And now is the time to seize this opportunity with an aggressive campaign and an even more aggressive campaigner. If nominated tonight, I promise each and every person in this room I will hit the ground running, come out swinging, and end up winning!